UI colors. Very important for any programmer who is doing the UI. So um, every color is represented by this object and um, it, you know, you can also create your own specific colors. There are certain user uh, system built colors like we just saw a black color, we saw the green color, we have a green color. But you can also use, uh, create any um, color with uh, using color spaces like, uh, you know, RGB, HCB and other. Uh, you can also point uh, the Xcode um, to a particular uh, color on the screen and Xcode will automatically uh, give you the hexadecimal representation or the RGB representation for that file. Let me see if I can show that to you quickly. Uh, okay. So let's just try to Yeah, so I'm trying to select the view here. Okay, so what I can do here is so it will it will change these colors. But if I go here, see if I click on this and if I just go to say um okay this may not be a good example, but say if I go to PowerPoint Okay, so I can use this to say, for example, get a very specific color for my app. Okay, using this. Um, yeah, I can just find out how to, you know, go between windows uh, and I'll come back to you on this. But, so, it, it uh, you know, it's... So the UI color is set with the appropriate uh, color coding uh, in the file for you. And also there's an alpha component. This is for transparency so uh, and opacity. So if you want um, you know, transparency in your color, like if you want to see the underlying view, then uh, you set it, uh, you, you know, set it to a value, a pro appropriate value between 0 to 1. And uh, yeah, right. So fonts. Um, like we said, after iOS 7, there's a ma there was a major um, UI redesign um, at Apple, and uh, what they did was uh, they completely redesigned this class, and to make apps more consistent. Earlier, um, you know, um, each developer could um, tinker around with uh, the fonts, and uh, there was not much consistency, or you know, obviously a programmer or a graphics. Uh, uh, no two um, graphic designers or even programmers think alike, right? So there was uh, a lot of, um, a, you know, it was each to his own. So if you were very good at graphic design, you would obviously come up with some great, uh, uh, you know, styles. But for a person who was not that good, um, they were just uh, groping in the dark, so to speak. So uh, Apple came up with a set of pre-configured fonts. And so for um, uh, text which uses, like, say, for example, the preferred headline, uh, uh, say, which uses a headline style, say, um, you know, UI font text style headline. There's a preferred font for that already pre-configured. And uh, you can use that, you know, by um, uh, calling this method, preferred font for style, and that appropriate, um, you know, uh, element in the text which you want to set this font to. So this helps a lot, uh, basically, in terms of um, look and feel. 
and there is also a system font so basically user fonts are for you know any user input and system fonts are for you know like the name of the uh, UI elements uh, such as you know the button so a system font of size um, so you give the point size so if you give say 2 then it will give you a UI font for that particular size so this object then you take that and then you manipulate to um, you know um, add more attributes so basically this is uh, like you know the different fonts and the different styles um, and the fonts for each of these styles okay and um, like I said fonts fonts are designed by artists who will not necessarily you know categorize them as bold or narrow so this is a community so you have uh, fonts which are being um, designed every day and uh, for you to be able to leverage these cool fonts um, uh, Apple lets you do that and it does it by uh, giving you the UI font descriptor method so what you can do is you can compare all the attributes and find the best match for uh, a given set of attributes so um, see it backtracks so you have fonts which um, you know you liked you got it from somewhere and then you want to use it in your app so UI font descriptor then tries to uh, describe this particular font using attributes like say the font family the font face or the font size etc and sometimes it may not it may get a uh, you know the exact match but um, it may not uh, correspond to you know the name of that so for example uh, for a bold font like you see here there are different sets of font uh, for Helvetica Noi and it comes from lighter to you know uh, really darker so um, a best match for a bold font may not be bold you know uh, but it's a good idea to still use this uh, class to get a font match for you so these are like you know when you're going um, like I said you know just remember the reference to these fonts it's good to know they are there um, and how we use it so here in this example they try to get a bold body font so they want a bold font for the body so uh, what they've done is they have taken the preferred font for text style US uh, UI font textile body for this uh, element the preferred font style is stored in say uh, body font and then from this body font they have um, uh, extracted the font descriptor now this is a set of attributes so now this font descriptor has certain traits and they are of the type UI font descriptor symbolic traits so from this font you got uh, a reference to the font um, and then from that you got the descriptor and from the descriptor you got the traits now in the traits you see if you have a bold so if it is already there in this then you don't do anything see here this is an OR function so what you do is you add traits to traits you add bold if it does not already exist in it and then now this new descriptor which is a font descriptor will have uh, the bold so irrespective of whether it existed before you have added it and then uh, the bold body font is what is now created so you have created a bold body font from a preferred font style so this is how we go about uh, manipulating these uh, objects uh, these classes